Now, China has warned the United Kingdom to not go further down the wrong path. It did so as it slapped sanctions on nine British people and four entities. It accuses them of spreading lies about alleged human rights abuses in Xinjiang. The response also comes after other Western nations slapped coordinated sanctions on Chinese officials. China says its move to sanction British officials and entities was an act of self-defense. It adds that the UK sanctions over alleged human rights issues in Xinjiang was based on nothing but lies and disinformation. Among those targeted by Beijing, former Conservative Party leader Ian Duncan Smith and researcher Joe Smith Finley. But they say they won't be intimidated. And Prime Minister Boris Johnson has given them his support. Those sanctioned will be barred from China, including Hong Kong and Macau. Their property in the country will be frozen, and Chinese citizens and institutions will be banned from doing business with them. Britain says China should allow international access to Xinjiang if it wants to credibly rebut claims of human rights abusers. This comes a day after China launched a PR campaign against Western retailers like H&M and Nike for criticizing alleged rights abusers. Many Chinese say they will boycott the brands. Ties between China and the West continue to fray over the issue of Xinjiang and Hong Kong. Hong Kong confirmed that it's told 14 countries to stop accepting British national overseas passports for working holiday visas. In response, Britain says the Hong Kong government has no right to dictate which passports are recognised as valid. It maintains that it will continue to issue the BNO passports. Well, let's speak now with Oli Barrett uh, joining us from London. Uh, Oli, Britain's ambassador to China has been summoned in diplomatic protest over the sanctions. Tell us more. That's right, to be given uh, Beijing's very clear view on all of this. But here in London, uh, there is also a very clear response coming from right at the top of government to what decisions that Beijing uh, has made. Boris Johnson uh, calling those individuals sanctioned by China, uh, saying that they're playing a vital role in shining a light on what he calls gross human rights violations being perpetrated against Uyghur Muslims. He says, I stand firmly with them. We've also heard from Dominic Raab, the UK Foreign Secretary, saying that it speaks volumes that while the UK joins the international community in sanctioning, he says, those responsible for human rights abuses, the Chinese government, he says, sanctions its critics. Now, these sanctions are unlikely to make a huge amount of difference to the daily lives of those individuals sanctioned here in the UK, particularly when international travel is heavily restricted. Some of them, though, are clearly going to wear this as a badge of honour. Indeed, one of them, Ian Duncan Smith, a former leader of the Conservative Party here in the UK, has said exactly that. He says he will wear this as a badge of honour. And that is a signal that these individuals are not going to be made to be quiet as a result of these sanctions. That in turn will put further pressure on Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, to take a tougher line with Beijing and that could lead to further deteriorating relations. Boris Johnson has always said he is not a Sinophobe and wants to have a productive relationship with Beijing around climate change, around trade, around business. That is getting ever harder. Ali Britain has also taken issue with Hong Kong because it's told 14 countries that the BNO passport is no longer valid for travels. How is this going to work out for those who actually hold the passport? Well, the UK, for its part, says that the Hong Kong government has no authority to dictate which passports foreign governments recognise as valid and says further the UK will continue to issue BNO passports, which remain, according to the UK, valid travel documents. It is certainly the case that countries will be able to, if they wish, 
ignore the new direction that is coming from Hong Kong's government. Some, of course, could, though, if they wish, go along with it. What it does demonstrate is that those BNO passport holders remain a pawn in this ongoing uh, divergence and disagreement and row between London and Beijing.